Welcome to lecture number 22 for ECE 463 Modern Control, Reduced Order Observers. Now as a recap, we've looked at full order observers. A full order observer is where I have a plant with a known input, a known output, but I can't measure all the states. In that case, I can build a full order observer that's basically an exact duplicate of the plant with some feedback gain H that allows you to estimate all the states. The resulting system is order 2n. I've got n states for the plant, uh, second n states for the observer. Well, here's a question for you. Do I have to estimate all n states? I'm already measuring a couple states, call it m states. Why do I have to measure or estimate the states that I'm measuring? Can't I just estimate the states that I'm not measuring? If you could do that, that would be called a reduced order observer. And the answer is yes, you can. The derivation is a little bit convoluted, but it does work. For completeness, we're going to cover that. Uh, turns out reduced order observers are more sensitive to modeling errors, more sensitive to noise, so they're typically not used. It's also much more complicated. Having an observer that uh, you understand has more robustness for modeling variations, more robustness for noise is a nice advantage. So typically observers are full order observers. But again, for completeness, we'll cover the reduced order observers. Now the derivation is as follows. Assume you've got a plant, uh, the form x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx, and of course the plant has to be observable. Now let's separate the states x into two parts, x1 and x2. x1 is measured directly, c1 is invertible, so I know what x1 is just by taking c inverse, c1 inverse times y, I know x1, the first set of m states. x2 are the n minus m states, the ones that I don't measure directly, the ones I have to estimate. So take the A matrix when you rearrange it this way, split it up into four terms, the B matrix has two terms, and the C matrix. Again, the second term is zero because I'm not measuring x2. The full order observer is as follows. I'm going to estimate states x1, and x2. That'll be in the same form as the plant. Plus I'll have this feedback gain h times the difference between the measured output and the estimated output. Now since c1 is invertible by assumption, I can tell you what x1 e is directly. So I'll just substitute that right in. Then the full order observer is just the second set of equations. Sx2e is a21 times x1e, which is c1 inverse y, plus a22 times x2e, plus b2 times u. If I let x2e to be some matrix L times y plus z, z is my dummy state, that will come from the dynamics of the, the reduced order observer. z dot satisfies the following differential equation. This is kind of where the magic comes in, the part that's not really obvious. Uh, z dot is f times z plus some matrix g times y plus some matrix h times u. If I do that and substitute, I get the error between x2 and its estimate is the following. a21x1 plus a22x2 plus b2u minus lsy minus sx. And doing a little bit of rearranging, I get this. But note that z, if I do some rearranging, is the estimate of x2 minus ly. So if I substitute the I get this equation. So the net result is the derivative of x2 is a21x1 plus a22x2 plus b2u plus this mess times L, plus this mess times F, plus that times GY minus HU. So grouping terms, I've got the derivative of E2 is this matrix times X1, this matrix times X2, this matrix for e times U. Now in order for the error to be driven to zero, I need all of this to go to zero, because otherwise X1 affects the error. 
so pick GC1 to cancel the first set of terms. Uh, let's see. I'll pick F to cancel these terms. I'll pick H to cancel these terms. So wind up with S E2 is F times E2. It looks like I'm missing an F E2 term here. So this should be S E2 equals F E2 plus all this. So I want to force all these terms to zero, resulting in S E2 is just F E2. If I choose F then to be negative definite, meaning it's stable, then the error E2 is going to be driven to zero. At that point, x2 estimate equals x2. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I've got this matrix L. Choose L so that this matrix is negative definite or stable. Once I choose L, that defines F. Once I choose L, that determines H. Once I know L and F, I know G. Then the augmented system is as follows. I now know F, G, L, H, given Y and U. I determine the servo state Z. From Z, that tells me what my estimate is of X2. And I know what X1 is just because I can measure that directly. So I wind up with the reduced order observer. Z has N minus M states. So let's go through an example. Suppose I've got everyone's favorite, the heat equation, four-stage RC filter, where I'm measuring the fourth state. Since I'm measuring the fourth state, I don't have to estimate it. I'll just estimate the other three states. Uh, so what I do is I first rewrite the system. The state that I measure goes first. The other states go second. So I took the previous system, rearranged it as follows. Uh, my B matrix says there's B1, there's B2. My C matrix, here's C1 and 0. So my estimate of x1 is just y. y equals x1. I'll now pick L to stabilize this matrix. So in MATLAB, here's your A matrix, A11, A12, A21, A22, your B matrix, C matrix. I'll choose L to place the poles of, here's A, A2, A22, and then I need C1, A12. And if I do that, I get the gain 6, 3, 13, 12. Once I know L, I know F. So there's my F matrix. My H matrix right here is B2 minus L, C1, B1. My G matrix is your inverse of C1 times A21 minus L C1, so on, so on, so on. So here's G. The net result is I now know F, H, G, and L. And I place the observer poles at minus 3, 4, and 5. So the observer is about three times faster than the plant. The system plus the reduced order observer then is your x dot equals ax plus bu. The servo state, z dot, is g times c times x plus f times z. Kind of goes back to this diagram. Is g times y, which is g times c times x, plus f plus h times u. And so there's your input matrix, x dot equals ax plus bu. And z dot is fed in by h. The output then, the estimate of x1 is just the output. The estimate of the other states are going to be L times C times Y uh, plus C. And it goes back to this black, black diagram. L times C, L times C times X plus Z.
So let's see how that works. Let's take the augmented system, the plant plus the observer. Now it's only a seventh order, because I have a fourth order plant, and a third order, reduced order observer. There's your net A matrix, B matrix, C matrix. Um, let's look at all the states. So this would be the actual states, x1, x2, x3, x4, the estimate of x2, estimate of x3, estimate of x4, and we'll give it initial conditions of 1, 2, 3, 4 for the plant. The reduced order observer is 0, 0, 0. Do the states converge? I'll now input the system in state space form. I'm going to do the impulse response. What that does is, if we make x0 my B matrix, then we give it an impulse. Uh, that'll make my, that my initial condition, and I'll see how it responds to those initial conditions as a natural response. So here's my system. I'll then take the impulse response of that system and plot it. So here's the natural response. The states start out at 1, 2, 3, and 4. Z was 0. And going through the reduced order observer, here's the estimate. That decays with poles at minus 3, 4, 5. Very quickly, the reduced order observer states converge to the actual states. And the state x1, I measured that directly, so we never estimated it. There is no error in x1. So the observer states converge, about as expected. It takes about two seconds, which again makes kind of make sense. The observer poles are at minus 3, 4, and 5. The advantage of a reduced order observer is you have fewer states. I only have to build a third order system. Um, that's actually not a very big deal since this is usually implemented in software and implementing three states isn't that much easier than implementing four states. However, in exchange for having a slightly simpler implementation, only third order versus fourth order, I have a much more complicated design. And that's a big deal. Okay. Full order observers are pretty easy to understand. The reduced order observer is pretty convoluted. So, in summary, reduced order observers do exist. However, they're much more complicated, they're more sensitive to modeling errors, they're more sensitive to noise. So, likewise, typically you use a full order observer even though you're measuring some of the states. Uh, but just for completeness, we have now seen reduced order, order observers in case anyone ever asks. So that's lecture number 22 for ECE 463 Modern Control, Reduced Order Observers.